Patino. Um, I am currently a student at Cal State San Bernardino and San Bernardino Valley College. Um, my major is sociology. Um, I'm going to become a school counselor. Um, I am from most, well, I was born in Bellflower, um, but as a young kid, I moved, my family moved to San Bernardino. Um, so I basically grew up in San Bernardino. So that's pretty much it who is your biggest inspiration well i mean my biggest inspiration would have to be my mom um she um raised me um as a single mom throughout everything she sacrificed a lot of things to um to be where i'm at at this point um especially now that um next month i'll be graduating from uh, cal state san Bernardino with uh, my bachelor's in sociology it won't be the end of my um education journey um, but it's a big accomplishment that I hope she's proud of me and I hope, um, you know, um, all, everything that she has done was worth it. And how would you describe yourself? Like if you could choose four words. To four words. As a, I would describe myself as calm, funny, charismatic, honest. Okay. <laughs> Who are your biggest supporters? Uh, my biggest supporters, I would have to say my entire family. From um, from my grandparents, um, one of them that's that's not here anymore, my grandfather, uh, Miguel, would be really proud of me as well. Um, so yeah, him and then, you know, my family in general, like all my family, they're really supportive, especially my brothers and sisters, um, David, um, Jose, and Yesenia. And then uh, my mom, of course, um, my five nephews. Um, so yeah, most my family, I would say. What kind of hardships in life did you have to face? Huh. Um, let's see. Some hardships I had to face is being the first um, in attending college in general. When I first went to college, I didn't know what FAFSA meant, what none of that meant. Now I do. Um, now there's times where like I actually help students um, fill out their FAFSA or um, fill out their uh, college application, things like that. Um, since I do work at the tutoring center right now, so I let people know like when you need help, either with it's people within the community or people that you know just generally go to valley college san Bernardino valley college i try my best to help them out in any way i can because i know the difficulty it is to attend um college in general as a first generation um so yeah that would be that would be one of my hardships career path are you currently taking the career path that I'm currently taking is to become a school counselor. I know for that I'll possibly need my um, master's degree, so that's something that I am looking f um, forward to. Um, for now, I think after I graduate college, I'm going to venture out with my bachelor's to see what I can get um, as far as, you know, an entry level job. Um, but yes, um, I would want to be a school counselor, you know, a school counselor. Um, something involving in the education feel where I could really help out um, students that have been in my shoes um, that would be one thing I would want to do. And what made you want to take this path? What made me want to take this path was um, counselors like sometimes you look at them as you know just people that form your ed plan but in reality they're not they're really um, helpful in what um, in your educational path in general uh, so I would want to um, to help out you know students and things like that um, for the better. What kind of struggles did you have to uh, face uh, going through this uh, path? Some struggles I had to face was you know just general things as a, as a first generation student like you know like getting like you know the right format on your paper citing correctly um, just things like that, um, you know, knowing in general, like, how to even get started on assignments, clarifying assignments, because, of course, like, I couldn't ask anybody in my family for help, because they weren't, 
too aware. Not that they never went to school, but um, within my family, um, uh, they all have, um, at the most, a high school diploma. Um, that is something that I hope um, I could help change within at least my five nephews and my younger brother, David. Um, so yeah, that, that would be something. And you mentioned many times about being first generation. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice would you give for up and coming um, uh, first generation students who are looking into like a similar career perhaps? I would give them, you know, just like, you know, like, que le echen ganas, you know what I'm saying? Like, to just go and, and, and go for it, you know? Um, if you fail a class, fail the class, you know? Like, there's, you know, you could redo it. Um, you know, get all the resources um, you could get um, as a student. You know, that's what they're there for. Um, I know because I was a recipient of those um, programs such as EOPS, the STAR program, um, the tutoring center, which I now work for. So just go ahead and, you know, like get in there and like shoot for the stars, you know, because at the end of the day, if you're determined, like you'll get to it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's, you'll, you'll accomplish whatever you need to accomplish to get that done. Did you find out about SCTA? I found out about SCTA. Um, I think I was, I was, I was getting out of a class. I saw a flyer. And then, of course, nowadays we take pictures of the flyers. We don't take the flyer with us. So I took a picture of the flyer, and then from there I emailed Professor Ed Gomez, which I hope all of you know. Um, he's a really good guy. Um, so then from there um, I signed up for the club, and then from there, um, you know, I started attending as a member. It seemed interesting to me. Attending and being part of an organization that involves like so many students in general um, that want to be a part of the education field. You know, you don't have to be necessarily a counselor, of course, but you could be a teacher, you could be, you know, like anything really, anything you really want in the educational field, um, a librarian, anything like that. But that's how I found out um, generally about SCTA and I haven't regretted it ever since. What is your favorite SCTA? Huh. Okay, my SC, my favorite SCTA memory was um, the Force Awakens that happened three years ago. That is gonna happen again this year on May. I'm in charge of that, so I should know the date. May 14th. That event is gonna happen on May 14th. Um, you know, it's gonna be an event. It well, last time there was an event was in 2019, and of course, you know, because of the pandemic, we couldn't do that event. So. It's something that we're bringing up back up again. It's a social justice event, um, and it's a one-day event, of course, focused on um, social justice issues. And yeah, it was just my favorite event, just because like, like, it wasn't like you know just your general meeting that you just showed up and it's like ten people. Like it was so many people from so many parts of um, California, you know, statewide at CTA, you know, faculty and things like that. So we felt. Um, more united and we ate tacos that day so that was the best part of that event but as far as the event that was that was my favorite memory what what makes your SCTA chapter so special what makes my SCTA chapter so special is just the people involved that like you know they really want to um want to be informed want to get that you know professional development going and with like the representative assembly, the Force Awakens, general meetings that we have, um, club events and things like that, that all helps to get to you where you are. Um, so I think that that would be it. What are some things you would like to see SCTA do in the future? Hmm. I think some things I would like SCTA to do is probably have more events themselves, you know what I'm saying, in general. Um, at our chapter and probably be involved more in social media that's a huge market out there um, that could help really grow our membership not that it's extremely low now but it would help out um, in the long run and final thoughts um, give out any advice um, any inspiration or anything to any sort of a student kind of going into any field just generally yeah just generally 
I gotta be inspiration. Oh no, let me see. Um, I would say, you know, just how I had said previously, you know, just shoot for the stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't like if you need help, ask for help. Like if you're struggling with that math class, go and ask for help in that math class. You know, like don't just drop it or you know say that it's the end of your education career just because you feel that way at that time. There's like so many opportunities for you to go get help. Um, not just in tutoring itself, but you know, like, um, counseling services, there's like mental health available, like, you know, um, so don't feel that you're just going to go to class. Let's say like, for example, if you have a class from eight to, to nine 30, don't feel that like that's it. Get involved in programs like I did, um, in that CTA and, um, you know, be involved in them. I've been, um, let's see I've been the vice president I've been the president of SCTA um, and I'm let's see the treasurer all kinds of stuff so just be involved in it don't be shy because at the end of the day like it's things that is gonna help you um, you know grow your professional development so that's what I would recommend do you want to shout out anything like who that your oh yeah yeah okay so i want to let you guys all know that we're gonna have an event on saturday may 14th 2022 um business building 100 um it's gonna be an event it's gonna be a one day event dedicated to social justice if you guys need help you know navigating that and being a part of it we would love to help you um so yeah just go ahead and reach out either to me or Professor Ed Gomez. And again, if you don't know Professor Ed Gomez, you have a problem because everyone knows him. So just go ahead and reach out to him or myself and, or Catalina, Catalina, she's a good chair. So Catalina, and then you'll be good to go and you'll be happy you went to that event.